In Christian monasticism especially Catholic, Anglican and Methodist, an oblate is a person who is specifically dedicated to God or to God's service. Oblates are individuals, either laypersons or clergy, normally living in general society, who, while not permanently professed monks or nuns, have individually affiliated themselves with a monastic community of their choice. They make a formal, private promise annually renewable or for life, depending on the monastery with which they are affiliated to follow the rule of the order in their private life as closely as their individual circumstances and prior commitments permit. Such oblates do not constitute a separate religious order as such, but are considered an extended part of the monastic community, and as such, Benedictine oblates also often have the letters OBLSB or OBSB after their names on documents. They are comparable to the tertiaries associated with the various orders of friars. The term, oblate, is also used in the official name of some religious institutes as an indication of their sense of dedication. Topic. Origins and history The word oblate from the Latin oblatus, someone who has, been offered has had various particular uses at different periods in the history of the Christian Church. The children vowed and given by their parents to the monastic life, in houses under the rule of Saint Benedict, were commonly known by this term during the century and a half after its writing, when the custom was in vogue, and the councils of the Church treated them as monks. This practice continued until the Tenth Council of Toledo in 656 forbade their acceptance before the age of ten and granted them free permission to leave the monastery, if they wished, when they reached the age of puberty. The term puer oblatus used after that council labels an oblate who had not yet reached puberty and thus had a future opportunity to leave the monastery, though puer oblatus can also refer to someone entering an abbey. At a later date the term oblate designated such lay men or women as were pensioned off by royal and other patrons upon monasteries or benefices, where they lived as in an almshouse or homes. In the 11th century, Abbot William of Hershau or Hershau died 1091, in the old diocese of Spires, introduced two kinds of lay brethren into the monastery. The fraters barbati or conversi, who took vows but were not claustral or enclosed monks, the oblati, workmen or servants who voluntarily subjected themselves, while in the service of the monastery, to religious obedience and observance. Afterwards, the different status of the lay brother in the several orders of monks, and the ever varying regulations concerning him introduced by the many reforms, destroyed the distinction between the conversus and the oblatus. The Cassinese Benedictines, for instance, at first carefully differentiated between conversi, commissi, and oblati, the nature of the vows and the forms of the habits were in each case specifically distinct. The conversus, the lay brother properly so called, made solemn vows like the choir monks, and wore the scapular, the commissus made simple vows, and was dressed like a monk, but without the scapular, the oblatus made a vow of obedience to the abbot, gave himself and his goods to the monastery, and wore a sober secular dress. But in 1625, we find the conversus reduced below the status of the commissus, inasmuch as he could make only simple vows for a year at a time, he was in fact indistinguishable, except by his dress, from the oblatus of a former century. Then, in the later Middle Ages, oblatus, confrater, and donatus became interchangeable titles, given to any one who, for his generosity or special service to the monastery, received the privilege of lay membership, with a share in the prayers and good works of the brethren. Canonically, only two distinctions ever had any consequence that between those who entered religion per modum professionis and per modum simplicis conversionis, the former being monaci and the later oblati, that between the oblate who was mortuus mundo, dead to the world, that is, who had given himself and his goods to religion without reservation, and the oblate who retained some control over his person and his possessions, the former only was accounted a persona ecclesiastica, with enjoyment of ecclesiastical privileges and immunity Benedict XIV. De Synodo Dias. V. <laughs> Oblates today <laughs> Secular oblates In modern practice, many Benedictine communities have a greater or smaller number of secular oblates. 
These are either clergy or laypeople affiliated in prayer with an individual monastery of their choice, who have made a formal private promise annually renewable or for life to follow the rule of Saint Benedict in their private life at home and at work as closely as their individual circumstances and prior commitments permit. As the oblate is in an individual relationship with the monastic community and does not form a distinct unit with the Catholic Church, there are no regulations in the modern canon law of the Church regarding them. One consequence is that non-Catholic Christians can be received as oblates of a Catholic monastery. Similarly in Methodist monasteries, non-Methodist Christians can be received as oblates. The same is the case with many Anglican monasteries, which accept non-Anglican Christians as oblates. <laughs> Conventual oblates To be distinguished slightly from other secular oblates, there is a small number of conventual or claustral oblates, who reside in a monastic community. If the person has not done so previously, after a year's probation they make a simple commitment of their lives to the monastery, which is received by the superior in the presence of the whole community. More on the level of committed volunteers, they would share in the life of the community and undertake, without remuneration, any work or service required of them. They are not, however, considered monks or nuns themselves. Often they wear a religious habit similar to, but distinct from, that of the monks or nuns. A conventual oblate may cancel this commitment at any time, and it is cancelled automatically if the superior sends the oblate away for good reason, after simple consultation with the chapter. <laughs> religious congregations that use «oblate» in their name There are several religious orders i.e., living the consecrated life according to church law that use the word «oblate» in their name, or in an extended version of their common name. These are not oblates like the oblates secular and «regular», and should not be confused with them. Examples include the Oblates of St. Francis de Sales Missionary Oblates of Mary Immaculate Oblates of the Virgin Mary Oblates of St. Francis of Rome founded 1433 in Italy, as a community of professed oblates living in common Oblate Sisters of Providence Oblates of St. Joseph Oblate Missionaries of Mary Immaculate, a female secular institute Notable oblates St. Boniface Bede Saint Henry II, Holy Roman Emperor Saint Francis of Rome The Servant of God Dorothy Day Kathleen Norris poet. Walker Percy Gotchik of Orbe Cardinal Francis Eugene George, O.M.I. Saint Bishop Eugene de Mazenod, O.M.I. Cardinal Jean-Marie Rodrigue Villeneuve, O.M.I. See also Third order Topic References Topic Further reading Herbermann, Charles, ed. nineteen thirteen. Ablati Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company. Topic External Links Oblates of St. Brigid of Kildare Monastery Oblates of St. Francis of Rome International Benedictine Oblates Community of Jesus Oblates This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Oblati. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton.